Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone in YouTube land and to my sister, Adrienne. We've had a few adventures in our life, <laughs> the two of us each individually, and here we are back again. So in case uh, any of you were trying to get us on another day and we weren't there, well, we're back. We are studying um, Praising God Through Prayer and Worship by Kay Arthur and Pete DeLacy, and we are in week nine. So I would say we are about a third of the way through. <coughs> and uh, the title of this chapter this week is How's Your Heart, as you saw. We're looking at um, Psalm 50, so if you want to gather up all your tools and um, everything that you need for the study, then go ahead and do that. And I will kind of get mine ready. And uh, I'm just going to read what it uh, says at the outset of this week. Have you heard of the expression hard-hearted or heart of stone? Uh-oh. Something happened, Adrienne. I just lost my battery. Well, that was a bit of an adventure. We just had to pause while I changed the camera battery. And now I'm not sure it's all set up correctly, but we're going this way because we're on a time frame. All right. I'm going to read you what's at the beginning of this chapter. Have you heard of the expressions hard-hearted or heart of stone? Today they are commonly used to describe someone who has no compassion. But in the scriptures, but the scriptures teach that before any person believes the gospel, he has a heart of stone. And when he believes, God replaces that hard heart with a heart of flesh. So how's your heart? And I have to pause again. Be right back. And I'm back again. <laughs> that was my lunch maker saying, are we ready? And no, we are not. I need to get one of those um, on dinner air bells. signs. I need to have an on air sign. You need, need a dinner bell so that he doesn't come all the way up the stairs. Well, you know, he's a sweetheart. He comes. Sorry, I'm adjusting this camera thing again. Okay, if I'm a little cockeyed, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to be. Okay, so how's your heart? And uh, now we are reading um, Psalm 50, marking keywords from our bookmarks, as we have been doing. Having so many words on our bar bookmark can seem overwhelming, but I bet by now you're recognizing them in Psalm after Psalm without even looking at it, right? Um, now we are going to look at, we're going to read through it just once and then ask these questions. So anytime you're ready there, miss. Okay. Mm. A Psalm of Asaph. The mighty one God, the Lord has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has gone, shone forth. May our God come and not keep silence. Fire devours before him and it is very tempestuous around him. He summons the heavens above and the earth to judge his people. Gather my godly ones to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heavens declare his righteousness. For God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I do not repro reprove you for sacrifices, and your burnt offerings are continually before me. I shall take no young bull out of your house, nor male goats out of your fold. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains, and everything that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would tell you, for the world is mine and all it contains. Shall I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of male goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you and you will honor me. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to tell, my, tell of my statutes? and to make my covenant in your mouth. For you hate discipline, and you cast words behind you, 
And when you see a thief, you are pleased with him and you associate with adul adulterers and you let, yeah, you let your mouth loose in evil and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things I have done and I have, Whoa. these things you have done and I kept silence. You thought that I was just like you. I will reprove you and state the case in order before your eyes. Now but consider this, you who forget God, or I will tear you in pieces and there will be none to deliver. He who offers a, offers a sacrifice of thanks and giving honors me. And to him who orders his way aright, I shall show the salvation of God. Well, well, I like this ending bit. Now consider this, you who forget God. Yes. Yes. Okay. But, Sorry, no, go ahead. It, as I was reading this, it, it seems like God is speaking. Mm-hmm. For the most part. Yep. And I have no idea who, is a, who Asaph is. Well, he's one of the priests, I think. Oops, sorry about this, everybody. He's one of the priests. Oops. So it's like God has chosen to sp speak through that person, through a certain person. Yes, through Asaph, the priest. Yes. Who, who uh, must have been a musician too, right? Yes. Because they were the musicians in... Um, and poets. So okay. Anyways, that was just an observation. I was yeah. As I was reading, it was like it was like a prophetic word from God. Yes. <laughs> right from the you know, and this person spoke them as they were told to him. Uh huh. Uh huh. Word for word. Yes, I agree. Okay, so it, it, um, in other words, um, we have what is it? second person starting in verse one going to six and then from seven all the way to the end is god speaking in first yes. person. yeah good all right we got our study tools handy we saw that we had in this uh salvation right yes um the other thing i noticed was there was a um sacrifices was mentioned a couple of times ah mm -hmm. and so was thanksgiving okay um but i should state that i have found seen covenant in the last couple of hmm. did you see somewhere covenant? along the way in here <clears throat> well i don't think it's a couple of times yeah it's been a while back it's been a but while anyways, back yeah, yeah okay so all right you know what? So here it is. Uh, we're going from the beginning. And uh, God is described in three ways. And the first of this. Yes. All right. Let's go through it. And I'm just going to underline the whole thing because it's, but I'm going to put my triangle around each uh, yeah. name. Okay, go. Yeah. The mighty one, the God. Oh, oh my goodness. Try that again. The mighty one, God, the Lord, has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion. We mark that in a special way, right? Yes. I have to remember which one I used. Oh, I have to get that pen to write. Well, it's in the, uh, it's a couple of, it's just on uh, Psalm 48. No, I was wondering what color yeah. I used. Oh, yeah, okay. That one. Uh, the perfection of beauty, God, has shone forth. May our God come and not keep silence. Fire, fire, fire devours before him and is very tempestuous around him. Okay, so that's a that's a picture. Uh, what, that does is, that, what does tempestuous mean? Tempestuous. A tempest is a storm. Oh, sorry about the siren. Um, oh, I thought it was at my end. No, it's here. 
uh, cause I've still got my windows open. It's so lovely out yet yeah, is very tempestuous around him. So fire is devouring. So it's, there's a fur fury of fire burning around God. He mm -hmm. summons the heavens above and the earth to judge his people, which is in Israel. Oh yes. And do you mark a uh, judge as well? Judge, yes, I was just noticed it though. You know, it'd be really nice if some of these people who uh, are happen to pop into our studies to watch us would just leave us a little note in the in the in the uh, yeah. comment section. Uh, you, they're all moderated heavily, but. Uh, because I upload these um, videos immediately after we make them, um, I'll see your comments shortly. So, okay. Gather my godly ones to me. My. Yes, thank you. I, I'm never sure anymore because sometimes I see things and I don't. Those who have made a covenant with me. I sacrifice. Okay, so this is a term that I'm not, we're not, I don't know that we're going to get into, but we're going to mark covenant, however we mark it. And I mark mine with uh, the sign of a rainbow. It's not in rainbow colors, but I make the art like three arches through it. Well, first I have to see how I marked it. And uh, I think I've marked sacrifice elsewhere in my Bible, but I'm, I'm not I don't know that we're going to look at that today. So that's for another time when we go through. I need, I need this one. Covenant, right? Mm -hmm. And I want a bright color. There, covenant. With me by sacrifice, and the heavens declare his. Uh, okay, covenant with, did you mark me? Yes. Okay, by sacrifice. Okay. And the heavens declare his. Right. Um, righteousness. For God. himself is judge judge okay sila that means there's an interlude oh i forgot about that okay here oh my oh my my oh my sorry people Okay, so we are marking that as Israel. And I will speak. I'm keeping two pencils in one hand. <laughs> oh, Israel. Yeah. I will testify, I guess. Oh, testify is a judgment word. Yes, I am. I just have to I am God I sorry am God your and we'll mark your in a second I'm trying to find all my pencils <laughs> I put them down and then I lose them I do not reprove you for your sacrifice for your sacrifices and your oh yeah burnt offerings are continually before continually is time yes just gonna mark that as a time phrase I 
shall take no young bull out of your war. house, nor male goats out of your folds. So those are, the th those are the animals that were used for sacrifice. Yes. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains and everything that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I, sorry, just a minute, I gotta pause. <laughs> wow, today has been a day of adventures in recording. Okay, where do we leave off? Sorry about that. Um, um, I would not tell you. I would not tell you. Okay. For the world is mine. And all it contains. Shall I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of male goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your oh. vows to the Most High. I'm going to underline that and then just put a triangle in the middle. Call upon me <clears throat> in the day of trouble. Okay, so hang on a second here because call is a pray prayer. Yes. And prayer. the day of trouble is a time. And just call. <laughs> and I shall rescue. Yeah. Oh, rescue, rescue. So we'll mark that like save. Yes. Where did I put that beautiful pin? There it is. I shall rescue you. And you will, uh, and you, oh my, there's a lot of Israel in this. Yes. Honor me. And you, sorry, I'm a little bit behind you. Honor me. Okay. But to the wicked. Oh. Oh dear, I didn't get a pen out for the wicked. The wicked need their own pen. But to the wicked. God says. What right have you to tell of my statutes and to make my or take my and to take my and to take my yeah uh, uh -huh. covenant my covenant in your there's covenant sorry I'm just taking a minute in oh yeah covenant thank you that's twice in this psalm so far right yes I noticed that. In your mouth. For you, excuse me, hate discipline, and you cast my words behind you when you. See a thief. He is a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, I'll mark it a different way later. Let's see, I'm it <coughs> now. Let's see. You are pleased with him, and you. <coughs> Associate with adulterers. You let your mouth loose in evil. 
and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you, there's a lot of the wicked in this too, mm. have done and I kept silence. You <clears throat> thought that I was just like you. I will reprove you and state the case in order before your oh. eyes. Okay, so don't go very far. I'm not. Uh, state the case in order. So this is um, a terminology of judgment. Okay. Well, that answers. So the prosecutor question. is going to state the case. So state the case in order. I'm just going to mark a big, not the whole, underline that whole thing. Yeah. <clears throat> now, can I go on? Mm -hmm. Now, consider this you who forget God. Okay. You. Now, you who is you? You who? You who? Well, you who forget God. Or I will tear you in pieces. And tear, tear you. See, I don't know who you is now. Oh, it's the you who forget God. Yeah, but I don't know how to mark that because it's not the wicked. The wicked. Not... Yeah, it is the wicked. Just put it. Those who forget God are wicked. Okay. And I, I hate to be so, I mean, in terms of our marking, let's just. Yes, yes. He. Lest anyone take undue offense. But really, you know, there are certain things that are black and white, and this is black and white. Yeah, this okay. is black and white. He who offers a sacrifice of Thanksgiving honors me. I'm reading that because I have to figure it out. Oh, I got the wrong person. So um, uh, he who offers a sacrifice of, well, that's the righteous. That is the righteous. And uh, how am I going to mark this? Yes, because look at he who orders his way aright. That's righteous, right? Aright. He who, yeah. and to, and I'm going to, so I'm going to put the righteous over him. And mark that incorrectly. I, or I'm going to underline orders his way aright because... That's important for me to remember why I did that. Mm -hmm. I shall show the salvation of God. Now that was very interesting. Okay, so we've got sacrifice in here now. Sacrifice is mentioned. Thanksgiving and sacrifice were mentioned actually a couple of times. Yeah. Now let me just look in the back and see if how I'm if I marked Thanksgiving at all. P. Um, sacrifice. Isn't that, couldn't we mark that the same as we marked altar? Uh. Yeah. 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 Do you remember how you did that? Yeah. So do you. Oh, I gotta find the right color pen here. Ooh, that had all the thing off it already. Okay. So I mark Thanksgiving kind of like worship. But that's the way I do it, and anybody can do it however they want. Just make sure that you do it consistently or not. As you learn to study and learn to um, slow yourself down so you're making these markings to understand what you're doing. And what you're reading and what God's saying to you. Um, 
you can you can learn how to mark in the same way. Yeah. Just, you know, this is your okay. Bible, right? This is your text. <laughs> it's for you to remember stuff. Because, oh, and, and blood was mentioned in this as well. Right? Yes. Okay. So we, when I mark blood, I make a red squiggly line underneath that. I forget how I. Oh yeah. Okay. So Thanksgiving sacrifice. Okay. So I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to mark like a squiggly line under sacrifice for now because I can change it with red because it's blood, right? Burnt offerings. So I, I, I'm going to put squiggling underneath that too. That was in the ch uh, verse 8. So sac covenant, with, covenant with me by sacrifices in Burnt verse 5. Offerings. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. There's some important things. Here. Did I that oh, sacrifice of Thanksgiving. So that's verse 14 all the way. And then you go down to verse 23, there's Thanksgiving as well. Okay. 20, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I marked that one already. Pay your vows. Okay, so these are um yeah, these are things to be thinking about. All right, so what uh, all right, let's so we got deliver Thanksgiving. Giving. We've got salvation, covenant. We've got a few terms of judgment. Okay, so there's a big honking, huge contrast in the in the the object. Is that the object? Yes, the object of the not of only, the thing. Not only that, but there's a huge con it's contrast of who's speaking and who's not speaking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we see actually um the biggest contrast is is um the what in verses one to six is is not God speaking per se, but it, it is what he says, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then when but yeah, and then it that's usually that's actually verse four to four but then it goes to five and then it starts with the god speaking and then it goes on from there mm -hmm. i wanted to point something out in the first part too so we we have it written with uh quotations to show that it's speak speech right yes okay so May our God come and not keep silent. Fire devours before him and is very tempestuous, tempestuous around him. He summons the heavens above and the earth to judge his people. And he says, gather my godly ones, my godly ones. He doesn't say gather Israel. He says, gather my godly ones. So I put that in the righteous. Oh, that's a good one. And those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So I would put those as those same oh sorry about that okay okay so god is summoning heavens and earth to judge who israel his people yeah his people but he says i uh, gather my godly ones to me those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice well who does that include gentiles Yes, yeah, so those who have trusted Christ, who have accepted yeah. the sacrifice, right? Yeah. Who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So he was the one who made the sacrifice, not us. And he was the one who made the covenant. We just accepted it. Okay, and the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Okay, so... We went through this and we marked it as, as as if it was Israel because he gave his chosen people a system of sacrifice to cover their sin, to make atonement. But he clearly says elsewhere that he has not required really the blood and the blood of bull and goats cannot make atonement for sin. They just provided a covering. So when we see this, we see that uh uh, when he called his people out of Egypt and sent Moses, then the message to them was that he was going to deliver all these plagues upon uh, Egypt to make them let his people go, and they would say no. 
And the final one was uh, during the Passover, when the pass the angel of death would pass over the ones who had the blood of the sacrifice on their lintels and on their door, right? Uh, now, the reason he passed over those, because those people believed God. Exactly. They believed God and they did what he said. We are, we Gentiles who are believers now have believed God and done what he said. We've, we've trusted Christ. We believe that God's sacrifice of his own son was his propitiation, which is that word that you never hear for our sin. And so um, as we're learning in Romans, and we're going to continue to learn um, that we have been grafted in to this, to this, my people. All right. So what, okay, so now it's the word of God to his people. So what is God's word about these sacrifices? And I didn't mark that one. So he said, he set up the system of sacrifices, the sacrificial system for them to do, which has been uh, halted since the destruction of the temple. And, and that was uh, 70 AD. I think that was Herod's temple that was built for that in the time of Jesus. And that temple was destroyed in 70 AD. I think it was 70 AD. Okay, I could be wrong about that. Uh, I, uh, but that's the number that seems to come to my memory. All right. I do not reprove you for your sacrifices and your burnt offerings are continually before me. But what is he saying? What This is a beautiful thing. This is the thing. Okay. So what God says here in um, verses 10 uh, through 15, let's say, those verses there have been one of my mainstays to, of corrective thinking in the world. Uh, when we consider the things like the animals that we love on the earth and the, you know, the trees and all of that, right? And all of the things on the earth. What does God say about that? That they're his. That's right. So I have said to people before, I'm not worried about um, being provisioned enough to do God's work ever. Because my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And this is the psalm that I got it from. Every beast of the forest is mine in the cattle on a thousand hills. All of the provisions on the earth belong to God. I know every bird of the mountain and everything that moves in the field is mine. So imagine, imagine, like God didn't create something that he is not intimately acquainted with. No. Certainly. So all these people are saying, oh, we'll save the whales, we'll save the eagles, we'll save the frogs, we'll blah, blah, blah. They don't even know how many there are on the earth. Save the frogs. What? Save the frogs. <laughs> well there are people in the you know california is a weird state and they, they people couldn't people couldn't build couldn't um, make firewall kind of um protections around their field because of certain kind of frogs or bugs or lizards or something and it, it hello my baby hello my baby. <laughs> uh, that's silly okay Okay, if I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all it contains. So, you know, God, shall I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of male goats? No. So what does God really want? Verse 14. A sacrifice of thanksgiving. Uh -huh. For what? Pay your vows to the Most High. Call me in the days of trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will honor me. Well, what have I been talking about? Like the cattle on a thousand hills, and the birds, and frogs. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, people. We're getting a little silly here. It's a cartoon, all right? We know. Everybody knows it's the frog, right? Hello, my honey. <laughs> Ribbit. <laughs> okay, so let's go back here. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving for what? For his provision. Oh, yes. Well, I was reading through that. I'm thinking, what am I supposed to remember? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so not only provision for um, our bodily needs, but also for the sacrifice. God doesn't need those bulls and goats to be slaughtered, which, which he did give them that to do. But he sent his only son, who is the sacrifice once for all. That's right. Right? And so we give thank, a sacrifice of thanksgiving for that and pay your vows. Okay, paying your vows, that's like offering your tithe or whatever. I don't know. Whatever you promise to God, give to God. Exactly. And call upon me in the day of trouble and I shall rescue you and you will honor me. Okay, so um, the, this looks sounds like a bit like a condition, you know. To yes. me, it may not be, but it sounds like a condition. Um, so, so offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. So that's what a thankful heart is a happy heart, right? And everything that we have is from God. The breath we breathe, the car we drive in, the food we eat, uh, the house we live in. That's all provided by God. He gave us yes. the ability or the wherewithal or the people who are sharing this with us or whatever it is that ultimately comes from God. All of it right. comes from God. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I shall rescue you and you shall honor me. So when, when, when we're finding ourselves in a day of trouble, God's going to rescue us. And because he rescues us and we wait patiently for him to rescue us sometimes, that is honoring to God. Okay, now he changes, verse six, verses 16 through, who are we talking to now? Who is he talking to? The wicked. Yes. Okay, so, um, you know, I was just, uh, before we got into this study, I went into to watching a bunch of, uh, let's just say, um, expose kind of video things about what's going on in the world. Um, none of this is new to me and, sh you know, and it shouldn't be shocking and surprising to us, but, uh, because the levels of evil are endless almost. And, um, just because you're becoming aware of it now does not mean it's new, <laughs> right? So for those of you who are watching this and you're thinking, oh, all these wicked people and what they've been doing with their corporations and blah, blah, blah. There's nothing new under the sun. The Lord knows all about it. Exactly. And, uh, you know, we get caught up. I mean, you know, exposing all this junk. Like, what are you going to do about it? You can grumble and complain and whine and point it out. But what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Nothing. No. We can't, so, well, in all reality, physically, we can't. No, there's nothing that we can do about it. So we can fuss and fret, and that, that's just a commandment that God has again has uh, told us that we shouldn't do. Okay, so how do we deal with all these negative emotions and all this information that we know is going on that is heinous? Some of it is absolutely heinous. Uh, it is, uh, if we described it here where it's dealing with young children, um, it's heinous, and that it is uh, And so that's as much as I'm going to say because your imagination knows what I'm talking about. But it's it's you know, and the the arrogance of the people who are lording it over they don't, they think of us as consumers. Oh, my my uh, camera's getting too hot. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> 
my camera got too hot. So now I'm going to just hang on. I'm going to pause a minute. i got to switch cameras. Oh, my goodness, today has been a day of adventure. So I just had to switch cameras because the other one got a little too hot. So that's something now I know. I, I had it on for a long time this morning waiting. But anyway, it's a little bit different focus. All right, we're good. All right, so we were talking about the heinous things that people are doing in the world. But here's what God says. What right have you to tell of my statutes and to take my covenant in your mouth? For you hate discipline and you cast my words behind you. Ugh. So this is very important for us. The people... We cannot cast God's word behind us. And the people who do that are called wicked. And they're here until Jesus comes to rule and reign. Right? They're going to be here and, and getting worse until Jesus comes to rule and reign. Yes. All right. When you see a thief, you're pleased with him. You know, I was just thinking about that with some of the things I was looking at today, N not to get disturbed by it, but to, you know, to, to be aware of the enemy. Because the people who are enemies of God are our enemy. Not that we have made ourselves our enemy. Indeed, we're praying for our enemies. You know, we are loving our neighbors. We are, that's, our, that's what we do. When we're in Christ, that's what we do. But they hate us anyway because... Uh, because they hate Christ and when uh, because we have the Holy Spirit in us the Holy Spirit's job is to convict the world of sin and righteousness and no wonder they hate us because they don't want people don't want I mean even us we don't want to be corrected we don't want to be told that we're doing a bad thing or that our way is wrong we don't nobody does All right and you associate with adulterers. You let your mouth loose in evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and God kept silence. So the wicked are getting away with stuff, and they've been getting away with stuff <clears throat> for a long time. You thought that I was just like you. I will reprove you and state the case in order before your eyes. So what this is saying is that <clears throat> God is not ignoring this. No. And people who think that God is like them are sadly mistaken. Even us. We we think, oh, yeah, we know. And, you know, the, the, we've done that study on, Lord, I want to know you. And so we can tend to think, oh, yeah, well, we know God. Well, God is uh, inscrutable. He is utterly thoroughly unknowable and the only thing we know about him is what we read in his word and the presence of the holy spirit teaching us about our savior because we didn't walk with him on the earth he was he was crucified a long time ago okay so there's a warning and i wrote this in the side margin of my bible now consider this that's what God says. Now consider this. And who is he speaking to in verse 22? To the wicked. Right in the very, what does it call them? You who forget God. Yes. Consider this, you who forget God. Or I will tear you in pieces and there will be none to deliver. So even in this psalm, Although people have committed heinous wickedness and evil, have denied, have thrown God's word behind them, have uh, given um, praise to, to people doing wickedness, mm -hmm. stealing, thieving, whatever, which is what they're doing right now. We don't yeah. see this happen, but this is what they're doing. They're robbing people of their of their labor, the things they labored for. They're robbing them of their income. They're robbing them of our family relationships. They're robbing us of human relationships. They're dehumanizing us like cattle because that is what they think of us. They call us consumers, and that's what they think of us. But that's not what God thinks of us. 
And the more we read and study, we understand how God thinks of us. So we have to uh, live in the light of what God thinks rather than what the world thinks. Yes. Consider this, you who forget God, or I will tear you in pieces, and there will be none to deliver. So it's a warning. God is, God is patient. That's what it says in 1 Peter, maybe 2 Peter. God is not slow, as some consider slowness, but he's patient towards us, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants everybody to be saved. That's his intent. But these are the people who forget God, who throw his word behind their back. He who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. So remember we were studying um, foolproofing your life. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom is what we, what we learned, right? But fools despise wisdom and understanding. So... <clears throat> You have to, those who want to hear from God must first believe that he is and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. That's elsewhere in scripture. So he who offers, I'm reading in 23, he who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me and to him who orders his way aright, I will show the salvation of God. So even the wicked, he's saying, this is the way out. This is the way through. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. That's what he said. And this is what God says. He who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and to him who orders his way aright, I shall show the salvation of God. So how does that apply to us here now? What are we going to do about this? We ought always be putting God in, in our this way instead of this way. Yes. And always offering some kind of Thanksgiving sacrifice, whether it be through our prayers or offering or time, talent. Time, time is talent. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, for me, it's got gotten really simple. Um, If I just remember to say thank you for the things that are in front of my eyes, <laughs> it's kind of hard to say thank you for the hard trials that we we are giving. Yeah. Um, that's why it was really helpful for me to study first and second Peter in depth, because trials are not there for no purpose in for the child of God, for the born again believer. <clears throat> They're there to refine us. They're there to grow us in faith. They're there to, um, to train us to, to rely on God and to acknowledge him in everything and to submit to his authority in our life. And uh, there's no bones about it in this psalm. Every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle of a thousand hills. Do you know, every single person who was created was created by God. We all belong to him. We all are his to do with as he wishes. And it says, uh, what does it say there? To the wicked, how, how dare you? What right have you to say of my statutes and take my covenant in your mouth? Well, they were using it wrong. And, and I, was, I would say, you know, that this happens all the time. And I started noticing this with social media. You know, people are saying, well, what kind of a Christian are you? Well, uh, the kind that reads your Bible and prays and tries to do this. And what kind of a Christian are you, I would say, <laughs> back to them, <laughs> you know. But that's what they're doing. They're holding hostage. They're, they're beating. And, and God says, what right have you to tell them my statutes and take my covenant? For you hate discipline. They're not even listening to God. So, no. why, so how are they, how are they, how do they have any right to judge anybody else? Right. Anyway, so maybe I've blathered on too much today. What I wanted to end with is the hopeful note is God will show 
his salvation to anyone who calls out to him. God will rescue anyone who calls out to him. That, you know, that's a, that's a pretty amazing thing. But most people are too stubborn and prideful to do that, number one, or to, uh, they don't, most people, and I'm, I'm saying this because I was one of the most people for a long time. I didn't want to say, oh yeah, um, it's your way, Lord, not my way. I didn't want to say that any more than anybody else does. But what I've discovered, and particularly, you know, I've lived enough years now to know that the benefits of doing that are peaceful. The peaceful fruit of righteousness, that's what you get for obedience and submission. I mean, why would you argue with the person who made you? Really? Anyway, so that's the end of, we have come to the end of day one of week nine. And I hope that has been fun and interesting for the viewers. <laughs> it's been a good study for me. And I really appreciate you, Adrienne, coming and studying this with me because I've studied Psalms very much. But it's it gets to be a lonely habit, and it's really um, kind of easy to not be accountable to study every day. Right? Anyway, so all of you people in YouTube land, I hope this has been a blessing to you as it has been to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that that you do rescue us from, from evil, and you give us so many things to be thankful for. I just pray that you would give us humble, thankful hearts, that you would create that in us, and uh, that we can number our days aright and understand um, our place in the universe where it comes to living amongst the wicked and living uh, simultaneously in your kingdom, not ruled by the kingdoms of this world. And so, Father God, I just pray that you would help us to grow strong, walking with our holy armor, and living in the freedom that you purchased for us in Christ Jesus, whom the Son has set free, is free indeed. Thank you so much, Jesus. And thank you that you have always given a way of escape for the wicked to turn and repent and come to righteousness to call out to you. I pray that if you're stirring somebody's heart out there in the... Uh, YouTube world that they would not be resistant to you because you resist the proud but you give grace to the humble and uh, it takes a humble person to say yes Lord I need you my way is not good your way is great anyway thank you Lord for for this time this morning thank you for the blessings of the fellowship that we have one with another and help us to stand firm in our faith in these times you've placed us in. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you beautiful people. I believe in you now. See you on the flip side. Bye.